I went a little bonkers banana pants, and so this is the fruit of that. <laughs> Welcome to part two of my beaded earring video. Jen is filming today so that I can talk more properly about what's happening before me. You might be thinking, why is there a part two? Well, because we made the last video in May of last year and it's now March of this year. 10 months has passed. So here is everything that I have acquired indigenous jewelry wise in the last 10 months. So this is obviously gonna be called beaded earrings part two. That's kind of a misnomer cause like there's some beaded hair ties here. There's a beaded medallion. There's some a jewelry that's like a dentilium quill work, some metal work, but like this is all native made jewelry. I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought that I had acquired less. <laughs> when I started laying all this out, I realized, you know, I might have a problem. Also, uh, I'm wearing gloves because a lot of this stuff is tanned hide. I want to get oil from my fingers on the hide. I mean, obviously in the course of wearing it, it'll happen, but like I've already messed up one pair of earrings by getting them a little wet. So like I'm paranoid now. So that's why I'm doing like museum mode. I thought there was gonna be like maybe seven pairs. I was like, okay, I've acquired maybe seven pairs. No. And there's one pair that isn't here because I had to get it fixed. So like that'll be in, I guess, part three. You might be thinking, wow, Kristen, this is a lot of money to be spending on beaded earrings. But some of these are gifts. Some of these are gifts just from people who love me. Some of them were gifts from the artists themselves, which kind of was a further incentive for me to do this video because I wanted to be able to properly acknowledge those gifts in video form. Jen, are you shocked that we have this many earrings here? I am a little bit shocked. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. I am a little bit surprised. <laughs> but I'm delighted to learn about all these earrings and regalia and everything. Before we get started, I think in this batch I know every single artist. So we're obviously gonna name all the artists. Some of them I know their nations, some of them I don't, but I will name all these artists and include their Instagram so you'll be able to see like, you know, the information they present and like the work they present. I am gonna do my best to pronounce things as well as I know how. Obviously there are hundreds and hundreds of nations. And if for whatever reason I, I pronounce something wrong and you are of that nation or you are that person, be like, hey buddy. And like, you know, let me know in the comments. Cause obviously I want to get better at this. And the question I get asked a lot and like is, you know, can non-native people uh, buy beaded earrings? Yes. If a native artisan is selling you their work, you can buy it. There are obviously like some pieces that like don't go for like public consumption, like regalia, stuff like that. Like that's a little different, but like stuff like beaded earrings, like anyone can buy beaded earrings. People worry about like appropriation. Appropriation is when you buy beaded earrings from like urban outfitters. Appreciation is when you like pay like a good price for beaded earrings from an artisan. First of all, let's talk about a pair of earrings that's probably in my like, I would say top five favorite pairs maybe even top three. And these are my Kang and Kodo earrings. These were made by Heather Stewart of Sweetgrass Beads. So the beads on Kodo's are on his eyes are glow in the dark. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. The beads are super tiny. I think most of her pieces are one of a kind. These are the earrings I usually wear if I'm going somewhere and I have to network because they're kind of like good conversation starters. So like people will be like, your earrings. And I'll be like, you're right. Let's talk about my earrings. Cause like I'm very shy. So that's a little bit why I actually have such a large collection because people like to talk about my earrings and it's a way for me to have conversations with strangers because otherwise I would just cry. Cool. And then, and then, cool. <laughs> Yeah, they also have holographic backings. <sighs> they are the coolest. I wore these to lunch with someone a couple months ago and like even the waiter stopped to be like, your earrings are so cool. And I was like, oh, I know, can I have some more water? <laughs> these are also from Heather Stewart, Sweetgrass Beads. These are powwow earrings. Uh, this is a cherry lemonade and this is a fry bread taco. <laughs> These I love a lot, like, because I actually, this is what I had at the very first powwow I ever went to, which is, you know, kind of what most people have the first powwow they go to. It made me feel good. It kind of like reminds me of that moment. And like, I really, you know, that made me feel like happy and home and really loved sweet. and special. And so here's the great thing about these earrings too. The str you can't tell at this distance, but like the straw, they're not white beads. They're white beads with a very, very tiny, 
blue and red stripes on them. So it mimics a real straw. Cool. Yeah. I mean, like these are, I don't think she's made, she doesn't make them again. So like these are all one of a kind. I, I, everything that she makes, I super cherish. I like, she does like drops once a month. It's not easy to get beadwork from artists. Cause like, you know, they, people buy them quickly. It's very competitive. I feel like her beadwork is like a little bit more accessible because like she puts out a lot more pieces. The next pair is also Heather Stewart. <laughs> this is the Heather Stewart Cinematic Beaded Universe. These are violets. I just thought they were beautiful. Also, cause I didn't have a pair of purple earrings. So this is a pair of earrings I bought because I saw on her Etsy that she had them there. And I was like, ah, oh, I gotta get them. Cause like at the time I was having a hard time getting any pairs of her earrings. So I was just like, I just, I want a piece of her brilliance. Even the gradients on these violets is just gorgeous. She's so good. I think like more than any artist I can think of, she's really good at like utilizing beadwork as like pixel art. Like the gradients of the colors and all of her beadwork is like, it's thought out. It's it's just gorgeous. All right, next pair. These are not Heather Stewart. These are Mariah Quincy, uh, IAQ. These are, I believe, old style Anishinaabe florals. At least that's how she described them. If for some reason I messed that up, we'll have that correction. This is another artist where like, she just kind of post drops and they go quick, like within seconds. I love florals, I love colors. These are hide back too. So like they have like a nice smell to them. After I got these, I contacted her and I was like, I really want to get a pair of hair ties that go with these. So I actually commissioned these from her last summer. I love these. I, I love them. So I just wear them. I love them so much. They're like beautiful and perfect. I feel like a little guilty because like I'm obviously not Anishinaabe, I'm, I'm Haudenosaunee. So like, and these are not like my people's florals, but they're so beautiful. And like, I, I just love them so much. They're just really pretty. Her beadwork is super tight. She loves to do colors. She has lots of nature stuff. She keeps doing like these little swamp type drops where it's like cattails and like things you would find in a swamp and like moths and stuff. And I keep trying to get a pair of her cattails. I keep not getting a pair of her cattails, but that's fine. I'm, I'm greedy. A lot of these artists have like the details of the past stuff they've made on like their Instagrams. So I'll talk about the details of like the size of the, the beads and stuff like that. If I gave every single detail there, it, this video would be like three hours long. So <laughs> I'm trying, we're, we're doing, we're kind of speed dating through my beaded earring collection. I'm obviously not giving every single detail about like the craftsmanship of all this stuff. So I don't know. Tell me yell at me. <laughs> no one's gonna yell at you. <laughs> These are Nika Gun Beadwork. This is an artist named Ashton Lee. One thing I really love about this artist, I have another pair of earrings from this artist. I have a pair of oranges, but they're really good at like really tight formations. Yeah, these are hide backed too. As you can see, I prefer big earrings. This for me is like a small pair of earrings. <laughs> like these are like dainty. They're not gigantic, you can't see them in this face. But yeah, I like, I didn't have a pair of sunflowers and like, obviously I wear a lot of yellow. So I kind of wanted, this was, this was kind of early where I was like, I don't have any yellow florals. And now I have like maybe too many yellow florals. Oh, we're going to talk about some quill earrings. These I got for pride last year. These are Quillionaire Society. So these are dyed porcupine quills. They're like dyed and wrapped quills. I mean, there's like several different colors in here in this different gradient. So these were all hand dyed. I love these. These are also small for me. <laughs> like, it's like, these are like, if I want to be subtle. <laughs> I want to be like a subtle girl in the town. I don't have much quill work, but the quill work that I do, I really like to collect stuff with colors. I really enjoy like gradients and colors and quill work. I think it's fascinating. All right, so let's talk about these. These are by the Spirit Beads Adeline. So the cool thing about these is that when you put them together, they make one seam. Yeah, they're cool as hell. That's kind of her thing is she makes earrings that like when you lay them side by side, they are kind of one landscape or like one like scenic situation. Sometimes she'll make a, like a bunch of pairs of earrings where when you lay like, you know, all of the pairs together, they all make one landscape, which I think is gorgeous. And like, I think it's like super cool that like you would have a pair of earrings that are kind of part of like a larger melange. She also does like extremely intricate like detailing here. So like, this is kind of also why I have these because although they're not like big and flashy, they are so detailed. So last October, I was like, I don't have any Halloween earrings, even though like Halloween is not like a cultural <laughs> native thing. I, I don't know if, what, like, what they were for. I just was like, I need them. And I went a little bonkers banana pants. And so this is the fruit of that. These are from Atai Panic Pock. She made a, a, another pair of earrings of mine, like a, a dangly pink pair of earrings of mine. She also makes like a lot of Disney and Sanrio. She's like really good at like gentle pop culture creations. But these are just little pumpkins and like, these are subtle. 
Yes. I would consider this to be a subtle earring for Kristen. This was also made by Mariah Quincy IQ. Brie actually got this for me as a thank you present for taking care of her during her bodycon surgery last year, which is really nice and she didn't have to do that. I really like the colors and I also like just don't have a lot of things in this color so I could match it to like a lot of my earrings and like usually I only wear this when I'm like doing the most. Beautiful. Yeah, it's it is it's gorgeous. It's an Appaloosa pony. It's my biggest medallion. These little beauties are beaded plume. This is Marcella, who is Odom and Yaki. I actually got to meet this artist. These are I bought in person. They're so girlish. I know. Well, pearl is my birthstone, so I wanted something I could wear with pearls. Cute. You know, if I wanted to be like a business. Oh yeah. Again, these are very subtle for me. <laughs> but this artist also made another pair of earrings I'm gonna talk about in a second, which I love, but we're not quite there yet. This is uh, also one of my favorite, favorite, favorite beaters. This is Heron Hill Designs. Another beater that I think is really, really, really good at like bead placement. And like they tend to like do a lot of things where they'll, they'll use a lot of the same colors, but they'll use different textures of beads to kind of create like movement within like the beaded pattern. So these have like rabbit tufts and they're also hide backed. I also appreciate honestly that they stamp the back of their earrings. Cause sometimes I say that I'm gonna keep better records. I never do. And then when I have to do videos like this, I'm just like, oops. I don't know who made these, but I always know these are Heron Hill. Heron Hill is Joey and Daniel. I know Joey is Anishinaabe. The designs reflect that heritage. Heron Hill also made probably not my favorite pair of earrings, but also in my top three, those like little blood root ones we talked about last time. So just anything from them, I just love. These are also from Heather Stewart. <laughs> One thing I love about her pieces is that she has like really creative backing. So like these are like black glitter. These are gold. These are like holographic. Like this is not super common. I, I saw these and I was just like, I, I need Halloween earrings. They have cute little gradients. I just, I love them, they're cute. So this next pair is, in my opinion, one of the jewels of my collection. This is hand etched by uh, Jennifer Younger of Jennifer Younger Designs. If you are absurd and you follow like indigenous jewelry or like beaters, stuff like that, Jennifer Younger made metal work that Lily Gladstone wore on the cover of British Vogue last year. And so I got to, I, I got to actually meet her in person, which was awesome. I was so excited. I truly was like, it's you, I, okay. And like, so I was just, I just lost control of my wallet. And that's fine. Sometimes that happens. It happens. Sometimes it just happens, girl. Yeah. <laughs> These are hand etched. I think they're so unbelievably gorgeous. I'm honestly so amazed that I have like a piece from such a well-known indigenous designer. These next earrings are Wisona. They're Colleen Colgrove. We're gonna talk about both of them at the same time because the same artist. These are Dentilium and Gold. One of these I got on my own and then the other one was in my stocking at Christmas. But these are Dentilium. These also have quill on the top of them. I didn't have like a lot of like Dentilium pieces. So I kind of wanted some more. It's sort of epoxied together into like different shapes. And then this one has like the little butterfly on the back, which is like like her company crest. Most of the earrings that she makes are kind of like nature. So she'll like kind of carve dentillium into like flower shapes or butterfly shapes. But she does like these beautiful dentillium drops all the time. The next pair we'll talk about is, these are Miss Kianga, the goat. Everyone remembers when they get their first Miss Kianga pair and I am no different. These are little strawberries and they're, they're smoked, so they smell like summer. They smell incredible. I smell like barbecue at summertime. They're super delicate. They've got like little wampum uh, details in the middle. The quills are hand dyed, so it's quill work and bead work. Ah, oh, she's a genius. These were made by Guajarani and Gaguadene, who are Mohawk artists. These are incredibly special to me because these are florals done in the Haudenosaunee style, which is raised. A lot of the florals I have are uh, Anishinaabe florals, which are very different. But Haudenosaunee florals are like this, where like they're very 3D, they kind of, as you can see, they exist in three dimensions and like they have these beautiful like raised details. These also have pearls, which is my birthstone. But I, I noticed that I didn't really have like a lot of like Haudenosaunee beadwork. Also, thank you so much to these beaders who sent me voice memos so I could pronounce their names. I think I still maybe messed it up a little bit, but like I wanted to like do my best to pronounce their names correctly. So like, thank you so much for giving me that guidance. I really appreciate that. The next three I'm gonna talk about together because they were sent to me as a gift by Bead and Butter who is a Matisse artist. 
they were a gift, which is like so nice. You do not have to send me uh, beadwork. So there we have these little dangles. They're kind, they're pans. We've got these little like sport Barbie situation dangles. I also like that they're like, uh, they're heavy, but they feel, they feel, subs I love a substantial dangle. Okay, they're nice. They're really, they're cute. I truly thought, I was like, I have nothing that matches these. I was wrong. I was wrong. Sometimes a girl is wrong. So never happened to me before, but those you know. Those are pretty dangly ones, all three of those. Yeah, they're beautiful and they dangle. These are my going out earrings. They are like my fancy red carpet if I'm invited to things. I'm not invited to things very much, but when I am. So these are Bougie Indigenous, who also has like a cute sticker I have on my makeup cart. This is an artist named Aim Manon. They do like a lot of like big, like sparkly, fancy, and it's kind of their thing. Like the, the, their brand is like red carpet earrings, basically. These are some shoulder dusters by a Mati artist. They're shoulder dusters because they are, they're long. I like the gradient. I also like that they kind of, they go together like this but they're separate <laughs> twins. This is another artist who I can't stay away from. This is Glittering World Gal, who's a Dina artist. They make these earrings that have like kind of these long strands. I mean, I love a dramatic earring, but they're really good at like kind of counting because this is a lot of counting. Like this looks simple. It's not simple at all because you have to both count and you have to figure out like when you want the gradient to start and like how you want the gradient to happen. They're beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna talk about this stuff together because it was made by the same person and also because I bought it together. This pair of heart earrings that have an arrow piercing them and they're bleeding and this heart pendant is Sush Beadwork. This is Darcy. She actually made these as part of like a Romeo and Juliet themed collection. She does like a lot of like romantic fantasy gothic type stuff like that. But I thought like, oh, these will go together. This is like for Valentine's day and like kind of, but like, you know, it's, this is, it's also like, it's on this thing. It's, this, it's very goth. This artist also made beadwork for Lily Gladstone's award season. These little Christmas guys, these are, these are also glittering world gal. <laughs> Brie got these for me. These were uh, one of my Christmas presents this year. Cause I was like, I don't have any Christmas earrings. <laughs> Again, Christmas, not really like a big, you know, native, like traditional point of culture, but what in my mind, if I don't have beading earrings for an occasion, then the occasion might as well not happen. But yeah, cute little reeds. I love them. I love, I love, love my children. <laughs> You know what, while we're, while we're here, we'll talk about my last pair of Glittering World Gal earrings. This is my last of my, it's Halloween. Little jack-o'-lanterns, little shoulder dusties. They're so cute, I love them. So these next earrings are also beaded plume. Maricela, who is Oodum and Yaki. These are very unique in my collection in that they're little columns, but they have Indian head pennies on the end of them. They used to make pennies with native people's faces on them. Not like respectfully. <laughs> I used to make them, you know, in the racist kind of way. But yeah, these are from like 1908. This is from 1908. This is from 19, I don't know when it's from. But yeah, these are these are actual Indian, they're called Indian head pennies. Cause on the one side they say one cent. On the other side, they have like a native person in like a headdress. But yeah, I think they're, they're tongue in cheek. They're cool. This is one of three pieces in my collection that are made by Haudenosaunee jewelers. This is by Neo Perkins, who is a Mohawk artist. So we've got like cool, like the, the raised beadwork here. It's like these little leaves are raised, but these are hair pipe bones. Neil Perkins makes these beautiful, delicate leaf earrings. They also have like this beautiful, like uh, made to order leaf body chain that costs like $900, which if I'm ever nominated for a major award, I will commission. Whenever I see uh, a Haudenosaunee artist, I always want to get stuff from them because I want jewelry that's like, you know, from my people. The last pair are these beautiful beaded and quilled earrings from Penelope's Kiwi Designs, Renee. Renee is Penobscot and Wabanaki. These have like a cool little braided pattern and they're also like, there's like little tiny beads outlining them as well as these like awesome leather straps. I love them. They also have like these little rose quartz centers. I have to give a shout out to Renee because when I got these in the mail, these parts were kind of bent and broken and she sent me new ones, which was super nice of her. These are my favorite. I actually wore them in a show last night. They kind of just go with everything. I love talking about my earrings. They're my pride and joy. I wear them all the time. And honestly, the fact that I'm not wearing earrings right now is just because the ones I wanted to wear are, are right here. <laughs> it feels weird doing a video like this wearing gloves because it's like, I'm not a museum curator. It's just like, You're trying to protect them. I want to protect them. I want to keep them as nice as possible for as long as possible because like, 
This represents like hours and hours and hours and like heart and tears and time and like, you know, all these creations are like deeply important and like imbued with like the good medicine and good energy of the people who were making them. And I just want to like keep them as nice and preserved for as long as possible. Anyway, I love my beaded earrings. Thanks guys. Thanks guys. I'll see you when I've acquired too many more. Bye. <laughs> Bye.